Okay, so here we go. So today we will be just uh, discuss how to handle a critical incidents in uh, in operation theater or um, or ICU or in emergency setup. So there are certain things which are common. Any any uh, critical incidents if occurs. There are certain things which will remain the same. Okay, so we will just try to focus on them for the uh, to start with, and then gradually we will expand. Okay, so okay, uh, so welcome everyone on board. So actually, uh. Okay, so you know the because in the oral oral part when this question is being asked, uh, they not only they want to uh, check what is the theoretical part, but actually the 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 reason to ask this question is how will you respond in real time? Okay, so like we do practically as well uh, that whenever of course when we become a big consultant maybe we are lazy to call for help but you can use the word call for uh, help or call for uh, assistance okay so this is the word which you you should not forget then uh, your approach should be airway breathing and circulation we will just elaborate uh, how maybe you need to stop something uh, we will discuss in which thing which we uh, what thing we will be stopping okay then uh, your uh, like uh, evaluation and resuscitation okay and management further management will be going side by side okay so uh, uh, remember one thing when you are asked uh, uh, dealing uh, such uh, scenarios in uh, MCQs. The only thing which is uh, different is that uh, they will be asking what is the next step, okay? What is the most appropriate step? So, so uh, but the basics management will remain the same, okay? So if we just elaborate about uh, like uh, airway breathing circulation, uh, usually, we, if the patient is not intubated, uh, we will just try to see whether the uh, the patient's airway is uh, patent, patient is breathing. And one, something which is related to AB is also the conscious level. Okay? Conscious level, and you can say conscious level, you will be evaluating with GCS or AVPU. Okay? Uh, or if it is uh, sedated, patient is sedated, you you will be using any sedation scale, okay? So conscious level is related to airway breathing because sometimes if conscious level is not good, maybe your response to your airway breathing management will be number one. And number two, maybe there will be some other reason. Uh, like for example, if you have a head injury and now you are handling that patient, uh, maybe that patient uh, clinical picture is like that you need to intubate and keep ventilated to to avoid secondary brain injury this is one reason another like uh, 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 like uh, head injury i am putting head injury plus another thing is for example burn okay so in burn maybe at that time airway breathing is secured like a ab is good but still maybe you need to secure the airway because of impending or anticipating problem Okay, so that will be an exception. So this is something, or of course, uh, with reference to that thing, your evaluation will be uh, according to the scenario, like you will be either doing some um, monitoring, you will be doing some investigations. So uh, with reference to airway and breathing, your approach will be like this. Circulation, of course, either you will be maintaining the, the monitoring the circulation with uh, just your clinical examination, Okay, maybe just simple clinical examination. How is the 
circulatory system whether the patient is cold clammy whether the any signs of uh, circulatory collapse and then blood pressure ecg invasive blood pressure monitoring or things like that so your basic approach will be like this now we will just take an example of certain certain thing very simple thing that if you have tachycardia okay if you just develop tachycardia so like uh, i will give you a scenario the patient is under anesthesia ga general anesthesia of course there will be difference in uh, general anesthesia or uh, spinal or uh, regional anesthesia so if the patient is undergoing any surgery under general anesthesia and suddenly you have tachycardia okay so what should be your approach anyone please anyone wants to speak out yes shahid what would you do sir tachycardia mein ek to try to speak in english shahid try to speak in english please ji ji sir first of all we will uh, consider uh, anesthesia light anesthesia may be a cause of tachycardia okay then pain is the second element pain management perioperatively uh, try to keep your if you can keep your Third approach hypoglycemia may also can, cause tachycardia if you can keep your approach this will be coming in d so can you put your approach in airway breathing circulation if you can just keep your approach with with this reference sir patient if it uh, patient is hypoxic uh, uh, very good hypercarbia very good hypoxia then there will be tachycardia hypoxia hypercarbia hypercarbia hyper acidosis okay. okay one more thing one more thing with reference to ab is tube touching carina it yes. can cause it can cause tachycardia okay what else so uh, uh, hypoxia hypercarbia tube touching carina hypo, hypo now with reference to c hypovolemia okay hypovolemia hypotension okay pain pain is one light anesthesia we discussed anything else wrong no. drug may be the cause very early good. cardiac failure sir let, let him speak let him speak please let him speak please he is uh, 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 one by one so wrong drug administration okay then think now more a little bit more is anaphylaxis or any drug reaction is uh, is one of the like one of the feature can be tachycardia okay what else anaphylaxis okay anaphylaxis yes anaphylaxis patient uh, like patient history maybe patient is having some thyroid problem or patient has few chromocytoma any any in an uh, endogenous cause of tachycardia like you now you can just think airway breathing circulation disability any any cause maybe the reason of tachycardia your and whatever is the cause you will be doing accordingly like you will be giving uh, adequate amount of uh, your you will be touching sorry Uh, you will be doing hundred percent oxygen because uh, whatever whenever there is too much tachycardia, there may be increase in oxygen oxygen consumption oxygen consumption. So you will try to in, uh, demand slightly in in uh, in, in, in increase the supply. This is one thing. Then we are missing one thing. I am just elaborating further because same approach you should be thinking in your mind and if you have. all these points in your mind all the time ready you will be what about ecg we did not talk about rhythm okay so whenever there is tachycardia may maybe there may be changes in the rhythm okay maybe there may be some arrhythmias alongside tachycardia okay uh, what sir uh, pneumothorax can also cause yes pneumothorax can also of course we will i am elaborating i am in in enhancing the the domain of the discussion okay so so um, like uh, uh, you will be monitoring something with ecg and now as uh, latif just mentioned about pneumothorax now we will be correlating 
anything associated with tachycardia okay so usually whenever there is tachycardia there may be as we mentioned that there is hypoxia okay so if for example now there is tachy now there is uh, hypoxia plus there is hypotension okay so this may be now we have to rule out uh, uh, pulmonary embolism pneumothorax okay because in these things things will be combined like uh, uh, so now you will be looking at a bigger picture so that's why i told you that even if there is tachycardia your approach should be call for help or call for assistance you should be doing airway breathing circulation approach you will make sure patient's airway is secure you will uh, put a, take in take on manual you will try to auscultate you will find out some things maybe you will find out uh, there is no air entry on one side okay there is a, uh, uh, it may be because of some pneumothorax or it may be tube on one side okay then uh, you will be looking out at other things so so that's that's you will be approaching okay then maybe you are looking at circulation you are seeing patient is receiving some fluid uh, in sorry patient is receiving some medication patient is receiving antibiotic patient is receiving blood any anything which may be the cause of tachycardia so until unless prove otherwise you will stop okay maybe maybe again now elaborate i was telling you stop so you will stop blood stop medication and stop surgeon okay this is one thing maybe they are in uh, putting some epinephrine or any medication which may be the cause of tachycardia okay so at that time you will be involving the 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 surgeon so stop as i told you stop call for help airway breathing circulation and then you will give either some anesthetic medication muscle relaxant analgesia uh, you will give some fluid you will adjust the position of the tube you will you will stop the blood you will so that is how you will be approaching okay and then if there is any arrhythmias then your scope will and how we will be uh, like uh, and, and you will just uh, broaden your scope okay so in arrhythmias uh, we will just cover arrhythmias also here at least tachy arrhythmias we will just try to cover if you will see in the arrhythmia uh, whether there is pulse or no so pulse versus no pulse okay then hemodynamic stable versus unstable okay broad complex versus narrow complex okay regular rhythm versus irregular okay so what will be the arrhythmias which will be without pulse Yes, please. Tachyarrhythmias without pulse. VT and particular VT? tachycardia, particular fibrillation. VF, one more. Come on. Atrial, atrial fibrillation VT. might be. No, without pulse. It will be pulseless electrical activity. Okay. okay. So this will be non shockable, and these two will be shockable okay so now hemodynamic in stable versus unstable so what will be unstable in an unstable you can say anything svt vt af a fibrillation or flutter okay then uh, simple sinus tachycardia okay uh, maybe patient with sinus tachycardia can be unstable Okay, so these these are the things which will be un, unstable. Usually sinus tachycardia, you will not do the cardioversion, but among any in these things, you will do synchronized cardioversion. Okay, and here you will do, uh, you will do defibrillate. Here you will just do ACLS with epinephrine. 
Okay. So your approach will be like this. Then broad complex versus narrow complex. What will you do? So broad complex, usually you will do if it is not uh, like, of course, it is not pulseless or it is not unstable. So you will be starting with lidocaine. Okay. At the same time, what will you do? You will do ABGs. Okay. You will do ABGs to see any correctable cause. Okay. So correctable cause may be any electrolyte imbalance, whether it is potassium, whether it is magnesium, whether it is calcium. And if, if you have a broader, uh, you can send the, the further labs. Maybe you find some other electrolyte imbalance, like even phosphate, uh, or things like that. So usually, but you will be intraoperatively correctable, correctable causes will be potassium, magnesium, calcium, or any other homeostatic thing like oxygen, CO2, okay? Um, acidosis, you will find about lactic acid as well. You will, uh, you will find hematocrit as well. Okay, all these information you will get from ABGs. So you will try to give lidocaine and then ne next step you will be doing ABGs and then you will further go further. Uh, further, you will, you will think more if it is not. So the next step for my, it will be am amiodarone. I, how much is the dose of amiodarone? 150 milligram. 150 to 300 milligram over 30 minutes and then 900 milligram over next 24 hours. Like you can say 30 to 60 minutes and then over next 30, 23 hours, you will be finishing 1200 milligram. If they just ask you, why you just give amiodarone a single dose? A high volume of distribution. Very good. It has very long half-life and it has very high volume of distribution. And amiodarone, like now you can just think, you can have your brain exercise. Amiodarone cause thyroid dysfunction. Amiodarone can cause high uh, hemodynamic instability. Amiodarone can cause liver dysfunction, thyroid dysfunction. Uh, so you you uh, you should be knowing about it. Okay. So of course in PEA or if it is uh, un, uh, uh, resistant, VFib or VT, uh, after uh, uh, first shock, second shock you will give ad, uh, epinephrine. After third shock, you will start. Uh, you will start uh, give amiodarone. Okay, so this is the basic ACLS algorithm which should have in your mind. In PEA, you just continue the CPR, and you will give every three to five minutes. You will be giving uh, epinephrine. Okay, and of course, you will be thinking about five H and five uh, Ts. Can anyone tell what are the five H and five Ts? Uh, hypoxia, hypovolemia. Okay. These are the most common. No, no, I'm talking about ACLS. Yes, sir. Uh, of the five H, the most common one, hypoxia, hypovolemia, then hyperthermia. Hyper or hypothermia? Hypothermia. Okay. What else? Do you know this is a, a failure question? If you are not able to tell these five H's and five T's, uh, this is uh, not acceptable. So hypoxia, and what about uh, hydrogen ion? And what yes, about hydrogen ion? What about this one? Hyperkalemia. Okay. So hypoxia, hypovolemia, hypothermia, hyper ion yani, uh, acidosis, hyperhypokalemia. And what about uh, five T's? Toxins, pneumothorax. Just a second. Pulmonary. If you divide, 
if you divide in a proper way, it will you will never forget. What about uh, thrombosis? So thrombosis either pulmonary or cardiac. So these two pulmonary thrombosis. Cardiac. Then do two temp uh, two uh, pressure problems. One cardiac tamponade and one tension pneumothorax. Okay. And then the last one is toxin. Pulmonary embolism or pulmonary uh, thrombosis, coronary thrombosis. Okay. So two thrombosis, then two tamponades, like, like sort of tamponade, pulm cardiac tamponade and tension pneumothorax and toxins. So please, uh, I'm not happy. You should not forget 5Hs and 5Ts. It's not common and it, this is this is ACLS. Okay. So, so though practically it's not, maybe we are not uh, taking care of them like this, but in the exam, you should not miss these 5Hs and 5Ts. Okay. So uh, whenever you are handling this uh, sort of scenario, you should be, always be ready. So because next question, further question can be, for example, if it is hypokalemia, what will you do? How will you replace? Around 10 to 20 milliequivalent per hour. Usually it is 2 milliequivalent per ml. Okay. So around 20 milliequivalent per hour, you can replace according to the level of hypokalemia. Okay. So whenever you are replacing potassium, would you like to replace something else as well? Magnesium. Very good. So you will, you can give some 500 milligram to one gram magnesium as well. Okay. Then what you will do with potassium, if it is hyperkalemia, what you can do? What are the things in your hand? Tell in, the, tell in an order. Who will, uh, just a second, Shahid, just a second. Albar, please tell me, how will you handle hyperkalemia? No, you don't want to tell? Okay, anyone else, please. Ikra. Okay, Shahid. Uh, sir, oh. we will deal. Yes, yes, speak, please. Sorry. Yes, yes, please. Sir, we will deal according to the development of hyperkalemia. It is uh, developing acutely or chronically. Uh, okay. Uh, then uh, first we'll see if there are the cardiac signs present. So, uh, so what will you do? If it is like six so with tall entity, tall entity waves. Yes, sir. So how will you deep touch? So we have the options uh, for deputashing. Uh, these are the nebulizing with ventoline. We have uh, uh, beta to agonist. Uh, okay. Uh, no option. Then insulin uh, along with the dextrose uh, infusion. Okay. What else? If you will try to cram this, you will not. You will not be able. Uh, can you nebulize while the patient is uh, intubated? It will be difficult. Am I right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, so at that time, immediately what you can do, you can give some calcium chloride to in, in strengthen the heart. Okay. You are strengthening the heart muscles. Number one. Number two, because potassium and hydrogen are friends. So, you will try to kill hydrogen. So you will give some soda bicarb. Okay. So two things. Then you can give insulin dextrose combination. So insulin will kick the potassium in the cells. But it will also kick glucose. So there will be hypoglycemia. So you will be giving some dextrose water. Then now you want to kick out from the kidneys. So you can give some diuresis. You can give some frucimide. Okay. 
so these are the common things which you can do even if the patient is hemodynamically unstable for example so what about epinephrine epinephrine will also push potassium in the cells of course don't tell in the start but if they are asking more 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 then you can tell very small boluses 5 5 mics one, uh, 10 10 mics of epinephrine will also kick potassium inside the cell okay so this is one thing then if you are in icu setup like as, as from where you started chronically so there are certain things you are giving potassium exhalate okay potassium exhalate will what will do potassium exhalate it will not absorb the potassium from the intestine you will stop okay one thing i forgot stop <laughs> you see so among the stop here you will stop any potassium containing solutions you will not give ringer lactate you will give normal saline you will not give any potassium containing solutions so you will stop potassium you will give, give uh, like like uh, further further management will be and if nothing is working then dialysis emergency dialysis to save the life okay so now you think decrease the absorption with potassium exhalate kicking out with diuresis and uh, dialysis uh, kicking them inside the cell by nebulization epinephrine and insulin to for to uh, to go alongside insulin it will be dextrose neutralizing the hydro, uh, acidosis or creating some alkalosis to put again kick potassium in the cells and then uh, increasing the strength because now potassium will be damaging the, the heart potassium will make the, the heart sleep so uh, it's like you know in cardioplegia we, we put potassium to uh, stop the heart when the patient is undergoing cabbage okay so uh, you are giving some calcium to strengthen the heart. So that is how you deal with uh, hyperkalemia. Remember one thing again, I because it's my responsibility to tell you again and again and again, please come out of the books. Try to understand the things. If you will understand the things, you will never forget. Okay? So, of course, we started from tachycardia and you see in last uh, few minutes, we have discussed so many things. Okay, one more thing. How much, uh, what are the problems associated with bicarb? Anything? Can you just think? Bicarbonate will do what? Yes, Shahid? Sir, in, in, increase carbon dioxide production. Increase carbon dioxide production. Cellular respiratory acidosis. Very good. It causes cellular, not respiratory, cellular acidosis. Okay. Because uh, with the cellular this, acidosis. Cellular, it, it, at the cellular level, it will cause acidosis. And you have to increase, uh, remove the CO, CO2. So ultimately, you will have to hyperventilate a little bit to remove this CO2. Because you will see. Now, my suggestion, whenever you are giving bicarb, have a look on the monitor. Okay. So if you are in intraoperatively, you will immediately find increase in CO2. Then another important thing, if you have a patient in ICU, this is more so, this problem you face more in ICU because usually these patients are always hypernatremic. Okay. So hypernatremic patients are very difficult to wean off. So you are giving bicarb and you are destroying the sodium levels. Okay. So it causes, because it has a lot of sodium, so it will cause further hypernatremia. Okay. So is there, can you know that, do you know any solution which you can, you can give to, to solve this problem, to, to correct uh, the like uh, metabolic acidosis, to give uh, some uh, like uh, uh, bicarb, but without sodium. Is there any solution? Do you know any, for uh, any option? It's, it's not available in Pakistan. Even I have not, used it i have heard about it so do you know about that solution it's tham solution okay tham fine tham solution yes tham solution does not cause hypernatremia and it is used for the treatment of acidosis metabolic acidosis so you can read about it what is this tham solution at least you should know the name 
hem solution okay so uh, okay usually what is the indication for bicarb at least ph how much ph should be there when you should give less it? than what 7.2 seven in some books it's 7.2 it's in some books it's 7.1 but you, you should be knowing the problems. Whenever you are telling about bicarb and you are calculating the ba base deficit, you should be thinking that you are not correcting the numbers. You should correct the situation, okay? If there is acidosis, like in some condition it is indicated, like for example, when they reperfuse, reperfuse the, 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 the liver, at that time, suddenly there will be gush of acidosis. So you need to give bicarb at that time or there will be certain situation in which you definitely need to give, okay? But not in every patient, okay? So, okay, so few things we just ha had a look, so we will just elaborate further a little bit. How to treat lactic acidosis? Fluids, thing. Very good. Intravascular volume improve. Very good. So it is it is a sign of anaerobic metabolism. Okay. Metabolism. So just you should know, I don't remember exactly. There is actually another type of lactic acidosis in which you, you don't need to give this. You need to give something else. And that is thiamine. Okay. Th thi thiamine. Alcoholic. Okay. Uh, yes. So actually in those, there is a, a, there is a lactic acidosis type A or type B. I don't remember exactly what type of lactic acidosis it is. But in those, that type of lactic acidosis, you need to give thiamine. Okay. So then another thing, because I am bad in calculating, actually there is a formula of, uh, I think, 0. 0.3 into base deficit, something like that. I'm sorry uh, with the body weight. It's, it's a formula. It's, if anyone can... Google and share, I will be really thankful because that's how you calculate the base deficit. Something like that. I don't remember exactly um, how much bicarb you need to give. I'm bad in calculations. Okay, because I, I try to follow the concept. Usually in practical purposes, you are, you are uh, usually we give 50 ml and then we repeat 50 ml to 100 ml according to the situation and we repeat. Okay, so coming back to what, where were, where were we? So we were, we started our discussion from tachycardia. We just had a look on the differential diagnosis. Then we discussed something about the, like uh, how we should, uh, how, how we should approach, what we should do. A number of things. Yes. Another thing, which is actually, uh, we, we forget if someone has good, how much insulin you need to give? 10 units, regular insulin. Okay. And how much dextrose you want to give? I think 50 ml of 50% yeah. dextrose water. This is actually, you confirm it. I, I don't want to tell you wrong, but you should be knowing that how many units you will give and how many mil 50%. 50 ml. 50 ml. You confirm it, okay? I, 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 I'm just telling you a task. You should know how many mils of uh, dextrose water because one ml of fifty percent dextrose will increase yes fifty ml fifty percent yes fifty two milligram per dl blood mm -hmm. sugar will increase okay so for in neutralizing ten units of insulin how much volume need to give you should know okay so that's it so another we talked about a few things. Okay, so now we further elaborate and now we will just focus, for example, if it, the cause is anaphylaxis, the stachycardia cause was anaphylaxis. Okay, so what will you do with anaphylaxis? You will, again, the same thing, call for help, airway, breathing, circulation, and stop. Stop the... I'm sorry, I was disconnected. So let me share the screen again. Okay, so if you have possible anaphylaxis, so one, one factor will be tachycardia. Usually rash is not mandatory and actually intraoperatively, you may not be able to identify the rash. So maybe tachycardia, hypotension uh, will come. Okay, and then one other thing will happen in 
anesthetized patient. GA, what is that? I'm sorry, please again. Bronchospasm. So uh, you you are you are telling the right thing, but with the wrong words. Should it be called as bronchospasm now, or something else? Patient Inclusive is under GA. Pressures. I'm sorry. Inclusive pressure difficult. Very good. Okay, so because uh, it's uh, it's uh, it it is because of bronchospasm, but actually you should say the in airway pressures will increase. So along, uh, usually if there is anaphylaxis, you will find airway pressures, tachycardia, hypotension, rash is not mandatory. Unless the patient is exposed and sometime you will appreciate, sometime in some uh, population groups you cannot. Like if the patient is dark skin, maybe rash will not be as visible as in uh, light, light colored skin. Okay, So rash, rash is not mandatory. So hemodynamic collapse, tachycardia, and if the patient is awake, not in GA, you will find, uh, uh, maybe you find an, uh, nausea vomiting, okay? You may find patient suddenly became anxious, complaining of shortness of breath because of bronchospasm, okay? And uh, irritable. So, so your approach will be airway, breathing, circulation. And now, if first, what, what, what should be the first thing to give? is stop the drug have? stop i have told what will you give oxygen airway breathing circulation approach is there the definitive treatment will be epinephrine okay adrenaline mm -hmm. epinephrine and it is usually it is in adults it's intramuscular 500 microgram okay and what else you would you like to give you will you will give steroids hydrocortisone you will give hydro uh, like hydrocortisone you will give antihistaminic antihistamines okay you will give bronchodilators nebulization and airway breathing circulation is at the top oxygen you will give fluids okay if uh, you can even in intraoperatively what you can do immediately you can raise the uh, foot leg, side. Leg. Foot side only. Okay. So foot side will, in, because what happens in, in anaphylaxis? Actually, there is uh, inflammatory mediators are released and there is sudden drop in SVR. Okay. So you need to give some, uh, like uh, all the things which will return and definitive. Then what will you do? You will uh, send the triptase levels. Okay. One immediate and then one after six hours. Okay. And then you will you will inform the GP. Of course, this is not in our uh, part of work, but you should be informing your GP. You will, uh, if you are, like you know, there is a challenging thing here, that you give propofol, you give muscle relaxant, you give um, uh, fentanyl, you give morphine. Now there is patient collapse and you, you are not sure what is the culprit. So actually this is another question which they can ask you. Uh, collapse at induction. Okay. So you will just uh, know, make sure you put in your in the medical record what actually happened. If there are multiple medications, you are not sure you have to mention all the medications. But yes, among the uh, anesthesia medications, muscle relaxants are at the top. And among the muscle relaxants, rocuronium and saxamethonium are at the top. Okay. And then antibiotics. So whatever it is, you, you will mention and then you will get, send the patient for allergy testing. Okay. There is a mechanism of allergy testing. You will refer the patient for that uh, allergy testing. Okay. So okay, so uh, so this this becomes the anaphylaxis. So this is uh, and they, if they will uh, they will ask you this question, 
your approach will be like this. So, you know, now you understand why I started with tachycardia. So we are uh, expanding our discussion. Anyways, so just think some other other uh, happenings like we will just uh, go through malignant hyperthermia. Okay. In malignant hyperthermia, there is uh, tachycardia. Uh, can anyone tell what is the reason of tachycardia in malignant hyperthermia? Increase metabolism. Increase metabolism and then increase CO2 production. CO2 production. CO2 is in, uh, stimulating the, uh, the sympathetic system. Sympathetic system. So because this is a MCQ which is coming again again. Then what occurs before? Uh, they will also write hypercarbia and they will also write tachycardia. So answer the correct answer is hypercarbia, not tachycardia. Okay. If you go to the theoretical, <clears throat> CO2 hypercarbia should be first, then tachycardia. What else occurs? Again, you see A, B, C will be the same. Stop will be the same. Informing the surgeon will be the same. Disconnect the circuit. Bring a vapor-free uh, machine, okay? And uh, we will be just think uh, uh, about the, the like some of the thing. Uh, uh, dentroline. Dentroline, okay? How much is the dose of dentroline? Two point five milligram per kg. Stat can be Very repeated good. up to okay. up to ten milligram per kg. Yes, so up to ten milligram per kg. And they can ask you how to prepare it. Okay. Like it's an Six. orange solution or, or orange powder or something like that. So you should be knowing how will you prepare. It's it, because it's something you, you should know. Uh, 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 we have, you don't have rental in everywhere in all the setups, but this is mandatory. Okay. And then for you need the cooling maneuvers. What you should tell for cooling maneuvers? Gastric lavage. Very Kendo good. Gastric Ga lavage. Gastric lavage. Urinary if bladder. Laprotomy is, uh, urinary laprotomy bladder. is going on, then we can oh. even lavage. Yes, lavage the, lavage the abdomen. Cavities. Okay. Cavities. You will do cold sponging. Okay. You will start infusion. Here you will be giving infusion of bicarb. Okay. Because of as big acidosis. And then... Uh, what else? Maybe there is arrhythmias in management. Arrhythmias. A further thing will be according to the scenario. We will just have a look on inotropes and vasopressors. We will just uh, enter into it. I'm just uh, telling you arrhythmias management. Uh, any hemodynamic instability, you will be managing. Okay. And uh, again, few things you should not forget, especially if you are in some international exam. Immediately, there is actually a website or a number, special number where you will be uh, notified and you will notify the this uh, case incidents and uh, you will uh, counsel the family. Okay, uh, these things will be, and because another thing we should uh, you should make it a habit that actually ICU in most part of the world is separate than anesthesia. Okay, so now because the patient will definitely be going to ICU, so. Uh, your you you can be telling that you will be notifying because this patient might need uh, further management in if I, in ICU if the patient survives. Okay, so then further they can ask you what is the differential diagnosis. There are a number of things. Uh, this uh, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, thyroid crisis, uh, some pheochromocytoma. Uh, pheochromocytoma. Then but there is a King Debro something syndrome. I don't remember the exact name. Even blood reaction, drug reaction, these can also be confused. Yes. Increase urine output to up to 1 milligram per kg per hour. Very good. Uh, because of renal shutdown. Uh, usually, 1 milligram per kg per hour in adults and around 2 milligram per kg per hour for, pedi uh, for pediatric patients to, to maintain the renal perfusion. Okay. So, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Uh, it's like that. And uh, uh, what else? Uh, okay. So actually, uh, uh, so uh, uh, dentroline is also being used in certain other, uh, other conditions than malignant hyperthermia. What are those? 
न्यूरोलेप्टिक मेलिग्नेट सिंड्रोम थायराइड क्राइसिस ओके थायराइड क्राइसिस thyroid crisis and neuroleptic malignant syndrome i'm not sure i'm not sure about it but also in tetanus for the if the this uh, contractures and muscle rigidity is not being treated by anything dentroline is also being used for the the treatment or the to handling the these uh, uh, contractures okay so these are few words about uh, malignant hyperthermia so similar now we will jump to thyroid crisis so similarly if thyroid crisis occur what will you do a lot all the, these things common things are the same and uh, here the additional thing which you need to tell r is passing ng tube and give which medication propyl thiouracil very good propyl thiouracil uh, it will not uh, it takes its effect but you will you will start it what else you will do your dexamethasone aim is to dexamethasone for inhibit further synthesis and release and peripheral no, conversion no 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 peripheral conversion it will not affect the synthesis conversion okay for further synthesis uh, it's uh, propyl thiouracil or carbamazole and these medications so you will give uh, and what else beta blocker beta blocker Which beta blocker is recommended? Propanolol. Propanolol. Preferably propanolol. Okay. Ah, uh, once because here I would like to tell you one more concept, which is not directly related here. What is the uh, peculiar thing about propanolol with reference to dose? There is like you know, one thousand milligram. We give prop ah uh, paracetamol, IV. as well as oral am i right and here usually we are taking 10 mg to 40 mg and uh, iv it is i think in around 1 mg okay so do you know the reason in this big difference if someone ask you what is the reason what you should tell high first pass metabolism okay because it has very big first pass metabolism so there is big difference in iv and oral dose so this is the reason usually uh, all the medication uh, they are giving going Uh, orally, they go to the liver. There's first pass metabolism, and then uh, it enters the the circulation. So the, this this is one thing. Uh, other than that, you will avoid uh, in all these scenarios. Uh, you will initially stabilize the patient, and then you will try to to finish the surgery. Okay, finish the surgery or finish it at a appropriate time by which you can close the abdomen and send the patient to be brought again to the for the surgery for the definitive surgery like even you can keep the abdomen open okay keep the abdomen open with celestic sillus there are there are a covering system by which you can cover the abdomen and they can bring they can pack the abdomen they can cover it and then you can bring uh, again further a go like uh, you, you should be like whatever you are doing is with the risk versus benefit so you will not try to proceed in an unstable patient so you will stabilize the patient hemodynamically by giving fluid by uh, treating this hypermetabolic state controlling the temperature arrhythmias hemodynamic instabilities giving some dentroline giving propyl thiouracil and then you will uh, go further so this is the the like steps you would be uh, doing okay another thing now another complication in which also can be tachycardia what about local anesthesia toxicity so uh, we'll proceed the airway breathing circulation stop infiltrating more local anesthetic okay and uh, for this we use uh, intralipid 1.5 ml per kg 
is it milligram or ml ml per kg as far as i remember very good ml ml so don't confuse okay it's 1.5 ml per kg of 10% or 20% 20% i i don't don't remember i forgot it it is either 10% or 20% okay 20% 20% okay so what is the maximum dose for uh, this one it can be repeated up dose of 12 ml per kg 12.5 mg or 12 mg uh, sorry 12 ml per kg okay so rest of the things are the same okay and uh, uh, like uh, uh, yes one thing i forgot to tell in uh, thyroid crisis is uh, for controlling of temperature you will not give aspirin okay because it will displace the free thyroid hormone from uh, protein okay so there will be increased free t3 okay which is the active one 3 t3 or t4 t3 okay so uh, this one and then local and oh, okay then, then few more questions what about lidocaine and bupicane uh, like uh, toxicity appear how usually uh, actually it will also cause tardicardic toxicity but here cns cns symptoms will occur uh, earlier uh, before earlier yes yeah, before then then cardiac cardiac here cardiac symptoms will appear early okay uh one more thing can we give uh, propofol as a intralipid no not at all can give but it will hypo uh, further no. Uh, hypovolemia no 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 we cannot give don't never say never say this you don't need to become a hero propofol cannot be given because there are two reason it will cause uh, hemodynamic instability and there is a difference in uh, chemical the branching the, the 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 branch change which is required it's not there in this solution so don't don't tell about propofol okay one um, one more thing for example uh, there is a critical incidence there was uh, a bupicane okay uh, 15 15 mg sp spinal hyperbaric okay how by the way what they add to make it hyperbaric dextrose glucose glucose dextrose how much uh, I, i think guess it's eight percent no i think it is uh, 20 mg or 40 mg per ml just reconfirm it okay because these things as an anesthetist we should know i think it is 20 mg per ml or uh, 40 mg per ml something like that my question is that if by mistake you give 15 mg we begin spinal iv what will happen nothing will happen sir why will collapse ha very good why why nothing will happen sir ye itna significant hi nahi not significant dose 15 mg actually the 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 thing there are two three things first of all we need to have five the answer should not be that nothing will happen you will say that uh, uh, 5 microgram per ml is the toxic level you uh, the toxic drug levels are important if you have given 150 mg bupicane in for example uh, erector spiny block or in uh, supraclavicular block okay so where it is going ultimately it is entering the blood circulation according to the blood supply uh, it is entering the blood circulation and uh, it is depending on the blood supply of that area so you should be knowing which uh, blocks are at risk so intercostal nerve block is a dangerous block because absorption is very high 
then this one uh, uh, what about uh, caudal caudal has also high relatively higher absorption so you should be knowing there is a you know arrows that which is the after iv which is uh, uh, iv and intramuscular and after that which sorry iv uh, which one is more so you should be knowing which one the sequence but, um, but remember this intercostal so wa the th the thing is that if you achieve a uh, toxic level you only then there will be complications so if you are giving only 15 mg even iv first of all it is hyperbaric so absorption will be a little slower it will be diluted uh, in the blood so maybe the absorption uh, this uh, absorption will be relatively slower and toxic level may not be achieved so it is depending on the toxic levels so this is a concept you should be knowing uh, that how toxic local anesthesia toxicity occurs. Then another question they will ask you, what is the mechanism of action of this intralipid? Uh, it binds the local anesthetic with itself and doesn't uh, leave it to work and exert actually, its pharmacological Actually, this is, uh, they, they just create a pool in which it is trapped. Okay? Not bind. It's not binding. It's not binding like Sugamedex. Binding is something else. Okay? So it trapped. It trapped uh, and remove uh, from the binding cardiomyocytes. Because uh, these uh, uh, local anesthetics are sodium channel blockers. Okay, so it will remove, it will create a pool and intra this uh, local anesthetic will be trapped in this pool. Okay, so common complications we have uh, on some, some of the dangerous complications we have seen. Uh, okay, so now high spinal and total spinal, if it occurs, what will you do? Similarly, we will proceed with the airway breathing and circulation assessment of GCS. And to stop the effect of high spinal further, we will change the position of the patient, making the head side uh, more okay. higher than the foot. Just a second. Just a second. Is total spinal occurring only with the spinal only? Actually, high spinal occur more often with ep epidural. Even high spinal occur more so not with the spinal anesthesia, it with epidural because the dose is too much. So if it goes up, it will cause total spinal. Usually you see how much dose you are giving. Another, another concept we can just discuss here, how to calculate the dose of epidural. How to calculate the dose of epidural. Usually we give 1 to 2 ml per segment. Per segment. For, non for, for motor block, how much we give? Uh, 0.5%. 0.5%. Okay. Uh, lidocaine, we are talking about bupicane, for instance. Okay. So, you, of course, like 2% lidocaine, but we are talking about bupicane at the moment. So, 0.5% bupicane. Okay. And for analgesia, usually we give 0 0.1, 0 0.1 to 0.2%. Point point yeah, because actually, point, uh, point 0.5 is mandatory for uh, motor. Actually, analgesia we can give even with 0 0.0625 to 0.25 percent according to the scenario, according to the situation, according to the site. But usually, 0.1 percent is given through epidural is being given um, uh, around uh, you can say 10 to 20 ml per hour. Okay, this is rate for infusion. Okay, so how to calculate? Like for example, if you have given uh, labor epidural for at L3, L4. Uh, sorry, L2, L3. Okay. So, how much till what level you need to cover? Uh, two third of the volume goes up and one third will go down. Okay. Very good. So, how, how will you calculate? Like, how, up to which level you want give? Uh, 
Uh, we need to count what level we desire for a particular stretch. No, no, we are talking about labor analgesia. So labor analgesia, we are up to what level you want in first stage of labor? For T10. Very good. So up to T10. So T10, 11, 12, L1, L2, L3. Okay. And then it will go further down, L4 and L5. So 3, 3, 3, at least around 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. At least 8 into, you see, at least 15 mLs you will be needing. Okay. So that's how that's how you, you calculate. And it's better, for example, if you want for cesarean section only, or if you want it for laparotomy, it is better not to give at L2, L3 because you need a lot of volume. And it will, uh, it, the, if you are giving more volume, it will chances. So if you want to have a, a T4, it's better to give around T6, T7. Okay. Because you will be needing uh, from, say, T4 to, for example, L1. Uh, the, uh, usually it will be like uh, it, it, it is midline in CN it will be up to T10 for example I'm just giving you an example midline supreme glycol in CN for uh, post-op analgesia or, or laparotomy okay so 4, 5, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 so if you are giving a T6, T7 it will be easier for you to uh, manipulate so one two three four five six seven eight you can say eight segment so around 15 ml you need to give so if you are giving uh, epidural you should be knowing so the more dose you will give there will be more chances of toxicity okay so if you want to reduce the chances of toxicity uh, you can reduce the uh, the dose further you can what else you can do you can give some epinephrine and of course, the concept of test dose, which is not very reliable, but you give test dose, and uh, that's it. You the, not the more than five ml. Not more than five ml at a time. Very good. Okay, so you give graded, graded dose, three to five ml dose, five ml dose. You will give like that, and you will gradually achieve it, rather than giving a twenty ml bolus. Rupiva cane is relatively less cardiotoxic than rupiva cane. Uh, it will cause toxicity but a higher dose. Like safe dose for opibacaine is around 2.5 2, 2 milligram per kg. For bupicane it is 2 milligram per kg. Okay, for bupicane. For uh, lidocaine, it's uh, if it is uh, plain, it is 3 to 5 ml per kg. If it is with epinephrine, it is around uh, 5 to 7 ml per kg. And if it is topical, it's around 8 to 9 ml per kg. Okay. So uh, this is the basic things about uh, high spinal and total spinal as we discussed yesterday that uh, if it is high spinal, a patient uh, will become apneic but as soon as you correct the blood pressure by giving some inotrope and vasopressor, the, the patient will come back. And if it is total spinal because phrenic nerve will be blocked uh, so the patient will not be able to breathe till the time the bupicane is totally washed out. So you need to ventilate the patient. But in high spinal, once you correct the, the hypotension, patient uh, may not need to be ventilated for a long time. You can extubate the patient later. on. Okay. So we have discussed uh, some of the... I will just uh, take a few more simple uh, things and then we will discuss because complications is very important. So um, I will tell a few things uh, before we finish. Embolism, okay. Actually, there are either it is a thrombus, either it is air, either it is a amniotic fluid, or it is bad embolism. Okay. So the basic pathology, what happens if you someone asks you what happens in embolism? Yes, Shahid, can you explain what actually happens? Why embolism causes the severe problems? So basically, occlude uh, the pulmonary occlude the vesicle. Main pulmonary. Sir, unable to define. No, no. Actually, no, not you. Don't need to define. 
actually whatever is the source whether it is thrombus it is air it is fat it is amniotic fluid what it will do it will actually block the main pulmonary trunk pulmonary. it is more so more so with thromboembolism and air embolism and less so with amniotic fluid embolism and you can say it is one uh, one two uh, sorry i will say uh, air embolism will be very acute so i will take it one one two three and four in severity okay or acuteness because if air is, uh, will go it will immediately block thrombus will also do the same thing there will be no blood supply to the lungs so there is no blood supply to the lung there will be no ret venous return uh, sorry no uh, 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 volume coming to the left side of the heart so there will be no cardiac output that's why entitled co2 gone run away sudden uh, sudden loss of entitled co2 it's because of that okay and uh, so according to the situation if it is air embolism you will make the head side down you will uh, immediately stop the surgeon you will ask them to put the uh, irrigate the area with a lot of saline okay they will put bone wax because usually it is through the dural venous sinuses or if you are when you are making the head side down actually venous pressure is increased then immediately what will you be doing you will be uh, uh, because uh, the, the any surgery in which there is risk of air embolism you always pass a cvp and you attach through the distal port one big syringe through which you can aspirate okay you will aspirate the air through the uh, port okay so uh, this will be the sequence and then they can ask further question about air embolism what is the sensitivity so transthoracic is a sensitive but trans esophageal echo is uh, the most sensitive one it can even detect very small amount of air. I don't remember. I think it's less than one ml, 0.3 ml, 0.5 ml. 0.25 ml. Yes, 0.25 ml. Even if even it, it can detect a very small amount of air. Okay. So the, the, again, the same same theory will be occurring. You will be giving uh, oxygenation. You will be giving breathing. You will be uh, ABC. You will be giving a lot of fluid. You need to give inotrope. Uh, and the, till the time you don't remove the cause, the patient will not survive. Okay. Uh, similarly, if thromboembolism occur, usually the source is in the long veins, uh, big veins of the of the lower limb. Usually, but it can occur in any other scenario. Any bedridden patient, uh, it it can occur. Any patient with plaster, even with upper limb. Usually, it is more so with, with lower limb, but any uh, any stasis can cause embolism. Okay, so uh, like you have to uh, if you want to prevent, you have to make sure that you are giving thromboprophylaxis, adequate thromboprophylaxis with a number of ways, even good fluid management is thrombo thromboprophylaxis. Uh, early embolation is thromboprophylaxis. Uh, doing minimum invasive surgery is thromboprophylaxis. Giving very good analgesia is thromboprophylaxis. Uh, uh, this uh, calf elastic, uh, elastic compressions is, uh, is a thromboprophylaxis. Uh, there is uh, compression devices which keep keep on uh, 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 compressing the the calf throughout the surgery this actually this is available uh, internationally and then all after all these things the uh, the pharmacological thromboprophylaxis in the form of heparin subcutaneous uh, this uh, sorry low low molecular weight heparin fundoparanex leporidin or any other uh, thromboprophylactic medications so this is a sequence of and then if it occurs in addition to all airway breathing circulation and everything here you need to give heparin you need to do thrombo, uh, thrombolis, uh, thrombolytic therapy okay you might need to do the vq scan you might need to uh, involve the cardiologist pulmonologist for the further management if the patient survive acutely in, immediately you need to give some heparin in the or you will be giving heparin. You will be going doing these these uh, maneuvers, which we already uh, discussed. You will stop the surgeon. You will give fluids. You will make sure patient is ventilated and everything. Okay. So because we have discussed the basic me mechanism, how we handle the situation. So rest of the things are the same. Amniotic fluid embolism and fat embolism. Remember one thing: these two have more of immunological response. So it, it causes, and that's why they are usually subacute. 
or it can be subacute. Yes, a big part of fat can go inside the circulation and cause uh, a physical obstruction, which is less likely. Okay, but if it fa enough amount of fat is entered in the circulation, it is causing subacute picture of pulmonary embolism with the same hypoxia, uh, hemodynamic instability, uh, and there are uh, petechiae because fat will enter everywhere. It will go to the in the urine. It will go to the cornea. It will go to all all the places. Okay. So for the diagnosis, you should be knowing the diagnostic criteria for fat, uh, um, um, this fat embolism. Okay. Uh, and similarly, amniotic fluid embolism also uh, is it, this is also another name for a, uh, amniotic fluid, uh, fluid embolism is the immunological reaction of pregnancy. Something like that. They have named it. So, but your basic uh, management strategy will be the same. Okay. So I will, I will, I will stop here. So I will just summarize what we discussed. That any complication immediately call for help, call for help, call for assistance, call for extra manpower, and then you will have to stop something. Okay. You have to stop infusion. You have to stop medication, drug. Stop the surgeon alongside airway, breathing, circulation. You will make sure patient is ventilated nicely. You will try to confirm the bilateral ventilation. You will try to give 100% of oxygen. You will make sure there are adequate uh, IV lines. You will make sure patient is getting good amount of fluid. And then you will go your uh, another approach. You will say resuscitation management and uh, like re uh, resuscitation evaluation and man further management will go side by side. Um, uh, and then, uh, like according to different scenarios, you will be doing either giving dentroline, you will be giving intralipid, you will be giving uh, like saline, as I told you. So there are certain things you will be uh, handling, but the basic principle is the same. Like in embolism, as we discussed, uh, one thing I missed that you will be doing the 12 bleed DCG, you will be involving the cardiologist, as I as I mentioned. So, uh, so the basic mechanism remains always remain the same always you will be identifying a problem you will have uh, some differential diagnosis in your mind but you will try to uh, to cover a number of differential diagnosis and your approach will be one by one you will be uh, going okay so i hope uh, you learn something so inshallah tomorrow because tomorrow i will i have a working day so tomorrow maybe uh, 8 30 uh, like uh, pakistan time 10 30 and saudi arabia time 8 30 we will continue our discussion from here so this is uh, like we, what we will be discussing what are the critical incidents how to handle critical incidents uh, uh, almost uh, similar similar sort of discussions i have done before and i will just uh, show you from where you can uh, get them and this is the the channel by the way it's a non monetized channel it's purely for uh, for academic uh, purposes okay here you will go to the playlist and you will find here a playlist with critical incidents so i have discussed a number of critical incidents the basic approach because uh, all anesthesia revolves around it so you can find a number of critical incidents over here okay and uh, the same same discussions I have done a number of time before. So I will add it here. So with, because we have discussed this topic. So if you listen to some of them, it will be it will be better for you. And like I have also discussed number of discussions are in English. Unfortunately, some of them uh, will be in Urdu. So apologize for them because there are some some of the people from other country who are listening to our to us today. So it's been it's a big honor for us, and, uh, and so thank you very much. Uh, all of you are uh, welcome to ask or discuss anytime. Uh, I can see some of the professors' name are here, so it's it's a big big honor for me. Uh, it's an open forum; it's for everyone, and uh, anyone can participate. Okay, so thank you very much. We will meet tomorrow, inshallah. Bye bye. I love you, sir.